Hi, it's Laura and welcome to another vlog. It's currently Monday morning, February 22nd and I am driving to school. Currently stopped at a traffic light, so don't worry. This morning I'm assisting in Grad Perio. One of the residents is going to be placing an implant and so I'll be his assistant. And he wanted me to be there a little bit earlier today. So I usually take the light rail, which is Seattle's train, but it's running a little bit late, so here I am driving. Each general school is different, and at our school, our perio requirements for graduation are an SRP competency on a patient, a perio maintenance competency on a patient, eight perio maintenances completed, two grad perio assists, which is one of the ones that I'm going to be doing today, and we actually have to do a perio surgery um, and have two follow-ups. So this is when you pair up with one of the residents and ask them if you can do a part of the procedure or do the procedure and you'll get credit for that. So I signed up for that and that's in, I think that's next week actually, where I'll be doing uh, extractions and ridge preservation or bone graft of numbers 8 and 10, I believe. And then after that, I'll be done with all of my perio requirements and that's it. It's raining in Seattle. Very typical weather. Something exciting is I'm going to be using the electro surge today to remove some buccal gingiva. Quite the afternoon. 19 crown prep. This patient had the initial prep done by another student in 2019 and had this temporary on it for the past year and a half. Um, the initial student referred the patient for clinical crown lengthening and it ended up not needing crown lengthening and then I think from then on the patient just didn't come back in and so he's had this temp on for the past year and a half. He also had an implant placed site number 21 and so that's the reason that he was on my schedule originally was for number 21 implant crown and it just so happened that the temporary was still there and so I took care of refining that today there was secondary caries because if you have a temp on for that long uh, you're probably gonna get secondary decay and so I had to clean up the secondary decay basically patch up the buildup with composite and refined all the margins and also got to use the electro surge which was really fun. What I did is I did the gingivectomy first on the buckle because there was so much excess gingiva and the prep was so sub G that I had to in order to get an impression and also just to refine the margins. It smells horrible. The smell of burnt gingiva is not fun but just got to make sure to have your high back on real close by and patient did not feel a thing I told him to rinse with warm salt water rinses and take over the counter pain medication as needed but it should heal up nicely crown prep itself went great I did have to refine it quite a bit because there was almost no margin on it I'll be seating both the implant crown on 21 and this full coverage gold crown on 19 in two weeks when he comes back. The grad perio surgery this morning also went really well. I assisted the resident placing two implants, number 22 and 27 for an overdenture. And it was good, learned a lot and went really smoothly. This resident is about to graduate. He's a third year and so he's very good at what he does. <laughs> and very efficient with his time. So I'm very appreciative of that. And so today was a really successful day. About to eat a banana and on my way to go to the gym to work out. Oh, you guys Wait, are they moving? Here with Kelsey and Elaha. Let's get this workout in. <laughs> So we're done with the workout. It's really important to work out during dental school, right? Yes. yes. 
Yes, definitely. Stay strong. Your ergonomics is really important. You have to build that core so you can have a long career. And also, you also want to look good for summer, so. Oh my god. But also, it's like really important for your mental health too. It helps with the endorphins. After a long, stressful day in clinic, you come to work it out. These group classes are super nice because at the regular gyms right now, like 24 in LA, you have to make you have to make reservations. You have a certain time slot, and so it's really hard to get to the equipment that you want to get. But in the group classes, it's nice because everything is literally laid out for you, and you're basically guaranteed a good workout. So I really like these group classes right now. They're all hit, so high intensity interval training. If you watch my earlier vlogs, like D1, D2 year, you would see me always at the IMA doing weightlifting, but we can't really do that right now. So we're doing this. And we like it, ooh, abs, ooh. Currently Tuesday morning and just parked. Drove to school again today. I've got a very packed day, so I'm excited to take you guys with me. First thing this morning, I've got a bridge prep number 13 to 15. One of my classmates extracted 14 a while ago, so this patient's been waiting to get a bridge. Um, and he's very excited for it today. So hopefully that goes well. This will be my first bridge prep. I've done a lot of crowns, but I haven't done any bridges yet, so. Hopefully it all goes well. I did book this patient for all day, the morning and the afternoon appointment. Just in case I don't have time to take the final impression in the morning, I can just bring him back after lunch and take that and then be done. So, fingers crossed it goes smoothly. So today was a really long day. 13 to 15 PFM bridge prep. 13 actually needed a buildup so needed to do that too. The nice thing is I got everything done. Little tip when you're doing bridge preps is to use your intraoral mirror, the skinnier one, to better be able to see the draw of your preps um, instead of just using the hand mirror. So that was a pro tip that I used today that was very helpful. And uh, it was pretty good, I had Supra gingival margins on number 15 and then equa gingival margins on number 13. Took the full arch impression, opposing alginate impression, poured that up, took Regisil, made temps. Overall, the appointments went very smoothly. I just think that could have been more efficient at some things, but it's okay. We're learning. And then after the appointments, I went to go grab happy hour with a friend and came back, hopped on a Zoom call because tomorrow I'll be at the geriatric clinic all day again, so I'll show more of that. And we have a huddle the night before to go over patients and who's gonna be doing what. So we did that. Also had a phone call with a potential job opportunity a practice owner who's looking to hire an associate, and so talked about that. And yeah, it's been pretty busy. So tired. <laughs> you were hanging the, like your life. <laughs> we're at the geriatric clinic again. It's lunchtime. We already saw a morning patient, and just wanted to show you guys how it is today. So I'm currently in the op, one of the ops. Um, I'm gonna put this down. I'm currently at the geriatric clinic. This, during our fourth year, we rotate through the geriatric clinic at least three times. And today is actually my third and final day here at the geriatric clinic. Yeah, we get awesome experience here. Really nice operatories. We get to do basically any procedure that we want to do and that patients need. And so it's been a really good experience. This morning I assisted Kelsey and she did a Profi and number 24 incisal fracture. She restored it with composite. I will be doing a Profi this afternoon and also recontouring some restorations, I believe, for a new patient that I haven't met. What's up, Brayden? What's up? <laughs> He's gonna do some milling. We're gonna mill a bridge for oh. <laughs> You're too tall. Sorry, there we go. 
right, we're gonna build a bridge. Uh, number 13 through 15, I believe. Ooh. And uh, we're gonna design CAD CAM. Cool. And have it done in the Serac machine by this afternoon, hopefully. Nice. So. Maybe I'll show that. Yeah. Here's the lab. And here is the Serac. It's pretty old but it was donated to the clinic for us to practice on and use. <laughs> what are you doing this afternoon, Christine? Alveolopathy. You are? Art. Yeah. Wow, are you excited? Yeah. Currently, Friday morning, I was in the urgent care clinic this morning and I saw a patient that went really quick. The patient came in because they were having cold sensitivity on upper left tooth and so it ended up not being emergency care and so I just took right wing and there was caries so I'm gonna bring her back in for a new patient exam and then treatment plan and go from there now I've got some extra time so I'm just reviewing the cases the lab cases that I have received back and so I'm just looking at them, checking them before the patients actually come in for their appointments to make sure that the margins are okay and see how they look. So I'll kind of show you how I do that. First one is a PFM crown that I just got back from tooth number 29. Here it is, so cute. Here's my prep. Let's put it on there. You also want to check the occlusion. You grab articulating paper for that. I'm going to go do that in just a bit, but just want to show you. So we've got this case, that's good to go. And then this other one is an implant crown. So this is on tooth number 21. This one right here. So we actually did a custom abutment on this one. There's the crown. This patient's got some pretty wicked occlusion. Check this out. Class three, underbite. He's been waiting for this implant crown for a long time, so I think he'll be super excited to get it. Good case, I'm excited. So I'm gonna bring him back in when I'm ready to seat both crowns. Just finished the mock rub endo competency, and my station's kind of a mess right now. Axis number 30. What the axis looks like on mine. <laughs> and my final. Yeah. So this morning's been kind of crazy. What is it? It's Tuesday, March 2nd. This morning I woke up to a whole bunch of people DMing me that there were two fake accounts. I'm going under my name and pretending to be me. I think they were just trying to capitalize on my giveaway that I'm doing right now. And so frustrating, flustered with that this morning. And then I had to drive to school to do the mock rev endo. And that took a long time. That was from 9 a.m. Well, we set up at 8.30 in the morning and then it officially went from 9 a.m. till noon. So what we did, as you saw, is we accessed and we accessed, instrumented, and obturated number eight and also accessed number 30. I won't actually be taking the REB, but every fourth year is required to take the mock REB as one of our competencies to fulfill the endo. Um, requirement. The endo itself wasn't bad at all. I think it especially helps because I've completed two endo cases recently, so I'm in the swing of things again. Then after that, I had a crown delivery and that went really well. I only had to adjust the inner proximal, I think the distal contact just a little smidge and then it seated perfectly, did not have to touch the occlusion, margins were good, so that went really well. It's only three o'clock. I've got to work out at 4.30. 
So I'm gonna drive over to my friends and then we're gonna go work out. I am editing the vlog and <laughs> just realized that I did not film an outro. So if you guys like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up, paw. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure to subscribe for more vlogs. I've got more videos coming up. I just need to edit them. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.